January 19th, I said it today. After I beat this boy, let's see what they do next. I bet you Devin Haney's gonna go up to 147 and say that they're a three-time world champion. I bet you Terrence Crawford either gonna go to 154 and drop all his belts at 147. Let's see if they do this. Let's see it. Let's see what they do. You know what I'm saying? And I hope somebody got that pre-recorded. Welcome to Body Work. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Body Work Boxing. I want to talk about Tiafimo Lopez and Light Skin Jermaine, aka Jermaine Ortiz, the technician. You know, at first when I was looking at this fight, I was thinking that I, uh, I like man, Tio just gonna, yeah, uh, he just gonna do his thing, but. Lately, I've been seeing Jermaine Ortiz and even talking that noise, you know what I'm saying? I seen him with the poster, ripping up the poster, you know what I'm saying? Looked like he in shape, looked like he ready to go. Hadn't heard much from T.O. and to add to it, Roley recently came on to say some things about T.O., you know what I'm saying? And they, they always question and, and try to implant things, you know what I'm saying? Implant little seeds in T.O. head because... It's a known fact that if T.O. Fimo don't go in there with a clear head, you know what I'm saying, he can either make the fight real close, closer than what it need to be, or he could possibly lose. You know what I'm saying? He's already tasted defeat. Jermaine Ortiz already tasted defeat. You know what I'm saying? They don't have to worry about protecting the O. And what I'm getting, the vibe I'm getting from Jermaine Ortiz is that he think that he can be able to do something. You know, I was going back looking at some things. I think he do a lot of, um, I think when he do his, like, his double hooks, his double jabs, you know, um, really when he letting his hands go. When he's a high volume puncher, it's good. The only thing is, he tend to get over his knees sometimes, leaning forward, and he got a, he got a habit that another one of these, uh, good boxers, a good boxer, he got a habit that one of these good boxers do where he, sometimes I think he tend to dip, you know what I'm saying, with nothing in front of his face. You know, in my book, I think that's what's going to spell disaster ultimately, unless Jermaine Ortiz just takes his time. You know what I'm saying? If he if he's a high volume puncher, but he's picking his shot and he takes his time, he has a way better opportunity. Either that, or Tiafimo Lopez could rush to try to make a statement. You know what I'm saying? And get countered because Jermaine Ortiz he's coming up on a 50% um, knockout rate. You know what I'm saying? I think he's what 17 and one and one with um, eight knockouts, you know what I'm saying? So he's approaching halfway. He can get the job done if you make mistakes. He is a technician, you know what I'm saying? I think he is a little bit better than what we give him credit for. Maybe he will have more power being up here at 140. Only thing is he hasn't got a knockout since uh, the end of 2020. You know, he does have the edge on Tiafimo as far as activity. He's been active as far as five months ago. T.O. was eight months ago. And before that, T.O. was like um, six months before that. You know, so I think he got the slight edge in activity here lately. You know, I think he's very gamey. And this is a trap fight for both men. Because I don't think that Jermaine Ortiz want to find himself being the barometer test you know what i'm saying to test out who's who at 140 because that's going to be brutal that's not one of the ones where you just want to get passed around you know what i'm saying like you know you don't want to get passed around at 140 it is the road you know what i'm saying this is why i'm finding more and more of my focus going in the 140 division because this is sea of sharks out there and teofimo lopez you know what i'm saying i'm really pulling for teofimo lopez because i would really like to see him and sabrero matias and, you know, contrary to popular belief, I do think that Tiafimo will fight Sabrero Matias. And I do know that when the stakes are real high, you know what I'm saying, Tio tends to perform his best. When he's up for a fight, he knows he has a challenge. He, he, he's probably the definition of fighting to the level of your opponent. Because if you, ah, and that's what makes this a trap fight. Because a lot of people know Jermaine, 
I think they're starting to get to know him and see where he's coming from. I know he's from Massachusetts, seen his history with uh, fighting boots in the amateurs. I watched that fight. He and um, I looked at how he attacked Jamel Herring. You know, so I think it's a it's kind of like a scary thing to see Jermaine Ortiz when he's real confident about somebody because he will step on the gas. But if he's not accurate enough to catch T.O., T.O. has explosive one-punch concussive knockout power. He's a knockout artist, you know what I'm saying? So we got, you know, we got a skilled boxer versus a boxer puncher, you know what I'm saying? But if T.O. Fimo Lopez can be very patient, use his skills, you know what I'm saying, and be very opportunistic, if when Jermaine Ortiz gets too aggressive, I think he can spark him. If not, Jermaine Ortiz can upset the apple cart. Anyways, I like this fight, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think T.O.'s getting a lot better in the press. He relieved me, you know what I'm saying? Some of the things that were said and done, man, you get it. Look, you know what I'm saying? Bygones is bygones, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to see the best fight, the best So I'm looking forward to this fight, and I think this is a sneaky good fight. I think there are huge implications on both sides for this fight. You know, they both have a lot to lose. You know, I even heard somebody, one of the subs was like, hey, man, um, it's over for T.O. I'm like, well, the way I see it, it wouldn't be over. Like, I don't look at losses like that. I look at sometimes you just, sometimes it might take one or two or maybe three losses before you really get well-seasoned and well-rounded and you are uh, a killer. Like, all of the killers ain't just undefeated. Everybody's not just dancing around like, oh, protecting they, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, so... These guys, you know, they have a lot to lose, but nothing to lose at the same time in the in the genre where having the O is everything. You know, um, I think this is gonna be this is gonna be a very exciting fight. And I would love to see Tio Fimo's mindset, but if he starts to buy into because I see the trash talking heating up. If he starts to buy into some of this stuff from old light skinned Jermaine, you know what I'm saying, he can go in there with a fuzzy head. And Jermaine Ortiz is looking, he looking kind of brolic, like he might be real aggressive. You know what I'm saying? T.O. needs to keep a level-headed mind and go in here with a focus. And when his father, when him and his father are dialed in and they've studied their opponent, just like they did Loma, just like they did Josh Taylor, and the confidence that they have, if they go in there like that with him, they're like a hot knife through butter. If not, you know what I'm saying? An unfocused T.O. to get upset once again. You know, what do you think about this fight? You know what I'm saying? This is a sneaky good fight. Who you got winning? You know what I'm saying? Politics aside, past history, stuff that came out the mouth, all that stuff aside. Who do you have in this fight? Put it in my comment section. Let's talk about it. Anyways, thanks for everybody who tuned in here at Body Work Box. But we don't take things for face value. We do that body work. Please fasten your seatbelts. You know something? Revenge is a dish that served cold. He's gifted, but he's gifted. You know, like I tell everybody, the trainer don't make the fighter. The fighter's already gifted, you just gotta bring it out of them.